Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Making sure that we're live. Hold on just a second. Let me make sure it's working. Let's see. Can y'all hear me okay? Can you hear me out there? Let's refresh this one more time. All right, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Elisa and I am the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com and I'd like to welcome you to my tools of the trade series. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be talking about the We Are Memory Keepers freestyle foil quill pens. That is a mouthful to say. Hey Carol, how are you? It's good to see you. I love these tools and let me just tell you a few of the things they just give you so much freedom and they're one of the tools that I've discovered recently that are just so versatile. I can use it in so many different ways in my craft room and I'm super pumped to talk to you guys about them. So let's jump right into it and I want to talk just some of the basics. So there's actually four different pen sizes. I have three of them because I purchased the starter the starter kit. Um, the first pen tip that you can see, let me see if it'll focus right here. This is the fine tip. Wait, this is the fine tip. I'm sorry, that's the regular tip. This is the fine tip. It's really good for that detailed um, work that you might have if you are actually writing, which I'll show you some tips, but if you're actually writing out words, this is a great one to um, purchase. The next one I have for you, this is kind of the standard tip, and honestly, this is the one I use the most. So these are sold. You can buy the starter set like I did, which means you get all three of these, or they're sold individually. I have them linked below in the show notes and you can check it out at scrapbook.com. They're available at By the Well for God and I have even seen them at uh, my local Michaels. So take a look at that. So here's the standard and then I also have the broad tip which also comes in really well if you're going to do some solid filled in shapes and I'll show you that in a little bit. Also available is the calligraphy tip and I do not have that one. I haven't played with it so I don't know how easily it moves and if it, it really does give you that calligraphy feel. So um, that's just something to check out. I highly suggest if you're going to get one, get the standard tip, the regular tip, and maybe the broad one or the starter kit like I recommend. If you really like them, then you can invest in the calligraphy tip as well, which is something I'm planning on doing in the new year. Hey, everyone. Hi, Amanda. Hey, Lisa. How are you guys doing? Okay. So for these pens, what makes them so awesome is that you don't need much to get started. What you do need, you need to plug them in. They need a power source. They are not battery operated. I am running two of mine off of just one of those standard chargers that a lot of people carry around for their cell phones and devices. So I have two plugged in and I have my third one plugged directly into my computer. So you need the pen, you need a power source for it. Um, I like the portable ones because it makes it really easy to move around my desk. I don't feel um, tied down to the outlet. And then you're gonna need some foil. So the type of foil you want is heat activated foil. There's different foiling products out there and some of them are meant for sticky um, adhesives like if you have a glue or a Z pen, some the zigzag pen, those are meant for stickiness. This is heat activated foil and of course We Are Memory Keepers has their own sets so you can pick up. I have three right here. These are fantastic because they come in different colors. I was a little bit worried I would go through the foil like crazy. I have been foiling like crazy, but I haven't really made a big dent in this collection. So if you are looking to 
purchased these four by six sheets. I highly recommend them. Again, they are linked below. I have, this is the Flamingo set in like the reds and warm tones right here. The Shining Starling, which is all the metallic tones and the Peacock tones. Hey, Nancy, how are you? It's good to see you. Hey, Peggy. Okay, you guys are gonna love this. Let's talk some basics. So. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when you use these products, this has been plugged in for maybe three, five minutes just to make sure it's nice and warm. You take your page that you want to foil on. This is just a simple tag for an example. The first thing you wanna do is secure the foil in place. It's very thin, so it doesn't like to stay in place. So it's much easier if you smooth it out as much as possible, as few wrinkles as possible, get it nice and secure. And I'm gonna secure it on three sides just because I want it to be as flat as possible. And then for me, I'm working just on a mat I had in my craft room. I haven't had it go through and like injure my surface or anything like that, but just to be safe, I'm, I keep it and I like to work on this mat. All right, got my foil, foil here. I'm gonna start with this standard tip and all you have to do is literally write. That's as easy as it is. So I'll start off really simple. I'm just gonna do a heart. And what you do is move nice and slow. If you have any bumps or any shakes, that will come across. And I, I won't lie, it definitely, has kind of an imperfect look. I'm sure you can continue to work at it um, and go slowly, but let me show you. So all I did was simply freehand that heart and there it is right on my cardstock. Kind of hard to see, but see how it picks up that shimmer? Love that. Let me show you another color. Let me do this is fun. Let me show you this on black, which is super cool looking. We'll go with purple, my favorite, always and forever. So I'm just gonna take the foil right here. Again, you wanna secure it down. I'm using washi tape, that way it won't tear at all. Secure it down. Here I'll try two sides. And this time I'll use the broad tip. And let me try doing some simple lettering. Let me write, I'm just gonna do my handwriting. Not the best handwriting, but that's okay. Again, you want to move nice and slow. I'd say easily, I mean, probably a quarter of the speed that I would normally write something. Nice and slow, nice and smooth, making sure you connect slowly. Have any of y'all tried these pens yet? They came out, what, maybe three months ago? Does that sound about right? Three to four months ago? And I did purchase them right away because I fell in love with all of the demo videos that I saw. And I am not gonna lie, I have been foiling all of the things ever since. It is so fun and it's so easy. That's the deal. It's just super, super, super easy. All right. Let me see here. I'm checking to make sure. And there it is. So on the black, it's lighter. It didn't quite take the same way on that one. Let me try one more thing. Let's just go on plain white. Now, let me show you some different techniques. So you can just put the foil down and you can use your handwriting and that's fantastic. It would be amazing. Can you imagine doing your Christmas tags and writing out everyone's name in metallic? I think that would be so gorgeous. Or in my family, we do an advent thing where I wrap 25 books and put them under the tree and just doing the number really large in metallic is so fun. Something else you can do is you can stamp and then trace that image. So here I have stamped this little house. Actually, let me try a different one. I want to use this. Let me see here. Hold on. Okay. 
my stamp ink got a little bit smushed here. When you stamp on top of the foil, you are going to want to use stays on ink because stays on ink is an ink that is intended for slick surfaces. And my stays on ink is all out at the moment. So I had to use my regular VersaFine Onyx black ink. And so it's a little smeary, but that's okay. Let me secure this down. And it's super easy. This is a stamp from By the Well for God, one of their most recent stamp sets. And it is a gorgeous hand lettering stamp done by, uh, let's see, Amy Kirk, who is Anaya Art on Instagram. And I love her writing and I've loved using the stamps already. Now I'm using the bold tip. And I'm using the bold tip because it is just thicker lines in this lettering. And so I'm wanting to kind of mimic the lines that I'm seeing here. And also something else that works super well for the bold tip is see this heart right here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it in. And I'm gonna use the circle pattern. I'm gonna go over and 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 over. You will see a texture, which I don't mind. I think it adds an interesting effect. So coming down here to the A. Now I am speeding up a little bit, so we'll kind of see what happens when it gets a little bit slower, but you can see that the foil is releasing from the paper here. I'm gonna go get that E in there. I probably should have chosen a shorter word. Yes, Amanda, the foil, the colors, it comes, the starter kit, if you purchase the starter kit, it does come with some uh, three basic foil colors. I think it's a silver and a gold and maybe a bronze, but I like the different color options. Almost done here, and we'll see how it did on the white cardstock. I am loving all of the phrases in the st stamp set from By the Well for God this month. Now, here's a tip. So I have it secured on four sides. I'm actually just going to lift it up on three sides because that way, if I'm not happy with how it came out, so say a part of it is missing or I needed a thicker line, I can put it back. So see, look how cute, look at, can you catch the shimmer? It's hard to catch it in the light. Look at how fun that is. Yes, place cards would be such a good idea. In fact, I almost picked up some today when I was at Michael's getting some supplies. Now I'm gonna put this back down. I'm gonna kind of go over the eye again because I really didn't feel like it got a full adherent so I'm going back over it now I can pick it up again because I left part of that washi down and yeah that's a much bolder line this time so keeping part of it down is a great way to make sure it's secure and then if it doesn't come out exactly like you wanted you can adhere it back down okay let me show you a couple other fun techniques. You all know that I love stencils and I'm gonna try this stencil, but what I'm gonna do is use it on wood. This is a wooden ornament I picked up at the dollar spot today, just a dollar at Target. And I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna use this stencil to add some ornaments. That's one of the cool things about these foil pens is that they will work on any porous surface. So wood, fabric, cardboard, anything you have. So let me show you, let me pick some different colors here. I know, I'm gonna start off with the purple again because I can't help it. I love purple. And actually I'm gonna do, try to get a couple done in one thing. So let's see, I'll go back to the bold and I'm gonna trace around. I'm using my stencil as the guide for that circle to kind of trace around. And on wood, anything textured, you're gonna to wanna to be really sure that you get all 
of all of that area covered. So there's one ornament. Let me see if I can add, let me add this one down here and second purple ornament. And see, this is a fun way. These do get hot, but what if your kids were to paint an ornament? And I know my kids, I have younger kids, and so like my boys are just starting to learn to write their name. And what I could do is have them write their name on a piece of paper, and then I could trace it. I could foil it. Look at how sweet that is, those two. I could foil it onto an ornament, and I'll show you some of those. Um, in just a second, I could foil it onto an ornament and then have that as a keepsake, like their, how they wrote their name in 2019, which would be super fun. You can add more. Now, let me show you the difference. I'm going to just trace. Actually, no, this is a bold one. I'm going to keep this with the bold. The bold works really nicely with big stencils like this. If I had something finer, I'd want to do that fine tip to get the detail covered. You can see, ta-da! Look how cute that came out for the ornaments. Now, something else that I wanted to try, I haven't tried it yet, but I thought I would try it on here with y'all, is what it looks like to overlap the foil. So you can see I have one little ornament right here. If y'all's tree is anything like mine, the kids helped decorate it, and so many of the ornaments are overlapped. I wanted to see how the foil overlaps. So let's check that out and see how it did with the overlap. Okay, got that one covered. Look at how sweet that is, overlapping. This one's really cute. I can't wait to finish the ornament. So ornaments, this is wood, painted wood, and it adhered perfectly. Let me show you another experiment that I wanted to try with y'all. This is a frame I bought today at Michael's. It's that kind of laminate, so it's not exactly porous, but I wanted to see how it would act. And I'm gonna tape down. This is hard to see because I stamped it in black, but this has a little bit, a little pattern to it. And I wanted to tape down this foil and see how it acted on top of the picture frame. So let's test that out. Again, always securing it down. I know these would be great teacher gifts. You could just go to the dollar store and pick up some simple ornaments. You could pick up simple picture frames. They do have wooden picture frames at the Dollar Tree, at least at my Dollar Tree, they do. And you can make some gorgeous custom presents for super cheap. Okay, so I have it on there. Let's see how this acts. I'm actually gonna use the standard tip. It's a little bit finer of a tip. And I'm gonna start out, there's some stars that I wanna trace on here. They are tiny. I think the ability to use stamps is one of my favorite parts. I never claim to be an artist and freehand drawing is not my forte but I'm able to add so much fun detail to projects just by tracing. I mean, and we've all been tracing forever, right? Like that's, that's how we start learning in art a lot of times is just tracing and copying. So I like that I'm able to use my tracing ability and really kind of customize all my projects. Okay, let me get this last couple stars and then I'll trace the lines. Um, what would y'all's favorite thing to foil be? I mean, I've seen a lot of people using them in their journaling, in the Bible journaling world, of course, these kind of like took fire. They're super popular. I've seen them a lot. And especially in the holiday season, that's, that's why I kind of wanted to do this tools of the trade now because in the holiday season, I feel like metallics are just all over the place. I'm trying to go quickly for you guys, but also get a good transfer. 
So for me, I'm actually just kind of coloring back and forth. And we'll see how well it does on this frame. It is, like I said, not exactly porous, so it's not totally recommended for this frame. But I think it might end up pretty cool. And something I can always do, just like I did before, leave part of it down so that I can go back and kind of add on to it later if parts of it didn't get covered the right way. Now, these tips do get really hot, so you want to make sure that you don't leave them plugged in forever, that you're being really careful, and take it from me. You don't want to test them with your finger, which I did. I'm that kid that touches the hot stove just to make sure. So trust me, trust me that it is hot. And you can always test on your foil or on your project. Okay, let me get some of this covered right here. Okay, let's see how this did. All right, so not a perfect impression, but a little bit, and you see that shine on it? So I think if you had the straight up wood, it would be better. But what I can do is put this back down and go over it as many times as I want to make sure it's as solid as I can get it. All right, let me show you. Oh, okay, here's a fun one. This one I'm super excited to try. So. A lot of times in my journaling, I will find an image online that I want to use. And like I said before, I like to trace things. So I kind of come in and print it out and then I'll trace it in my Bible. You can do the same thing, but with your foiler. And I have this super cute bag that I picked up at Target today. And I'm pumped because I want to use it to transfer on a snowflake, I'm gonna use these bold tips. So let me find, I'm looking, I think, what color should I do? This has blue in it, would a blue snowflake? Oh, Carol, that's a good idea. Maybe lightly sanding it might create more porous. I mean, I think there's a lot of unfinished wood ones that you could just grab and use. That would probably be my recommendation in the future. Here it is. So I'm going to go with blue. What do you guys think? Because there's a little bit of blue right there. I'm thinking I'm going to do blue. Okay. For this, hold on just a second. Let me grab some safety pins. I think that might be a good choice to help keep everything in place when you're working on fabric. So I'm going to do this and actually I'm going to safety pin straight through here and straight through my fabric. And I picked up the foil on the other side. Oh, Carol, you know, I love purple. Purple is always a go-to for me. And I'm going to just safety pin. I think I'll go with one more safety pin here on the side, making sure I kind of, yeah, I have the foil underneath there. Super excited to try this. How cute is this little bag? $7 at Target. I love it. Okay. Okay. So got all of this in. Yeah, it's a fabric bag. It's like a big purse. I'll be able to use it a lot this season. So I am going to outline my snowflake and then maybe come back and fill it in bold. When you're going through paper, so this is paper, then foil, then the fabric. So when you're going through paper, you're gonna have to go extra slow to make sure that the heat is actually transferring. So here I'm gonna go nice and slow and I'm actually gonna make just the straight line down the middle and come right here. And it's cool because you can see through the, you can see the indention in the paper so you can kind of see where you've been so you don't lose your place. But coming through here, and I'm gonna go nice and slow and kind of transfer the snowflake 
to the bag. And again, this would be a super fun present to customize for teachers, for your kiddos. Think of your stockings. Adding names to stockings would be super fun and easy to do, even names or initials. So again, nice and slow, making sure everything has gotten the chance to heat up. And I can hear it kind of crackling underneath. So I think that it is working. And actually, I'm gonna do this one line and then I'm gonna double check it because I'd hate to spend a super long time and see. Yeah, it totally works on fabric. And I have another tip for my Bible journaling friends that I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, so if you can see on the paper, it definitely like made an indention. Let's peek through and see how it did. Oh, maybe it didn't heat up enough. Well, it didn't take on that fabric. Well, let me double check. Here, let me show you. I tried it earlier on, where did I put this? These fabric clips. So, these super cute clips that we all love. And let me just add some little hearts. So, got this super hot. Let me add it might have been that I printed out on paper that was too thick so I could try something else on my bag now the paper technique I have done in my Bible before where I traced paper Let's see how this one did. Now that one's light. So a little bit, but it's not working quite like I thought it was gonna work. Okay, well, that's surprising. There's a little bit left on here, but it's just not imprinting on the fabric quite like I thought it was going to. Let's do a star. It's supposed to work on any thing that's porous but this one maybe yeah so it's pretty light on here and it might have to do with the color of fabric and that might have been the issue with that bag is that it's pretty dense a pretty densely colored fabric so that might be part of the deal I'll have to keep trying I'll have to get back to you guys and see if I can get that fabric now I'm curious, now I'm gonna mess with it some. So let's do this. We're about to go rogue here because I really thought it would work. You could, Bobby, you could do that. I wanted to print out this image because I truthfully don't have a snowflake stamp, which I know is kind of shocking because, hello, I have all the stamps. But let's see, you know what? Let's do this. I'm gonna test it inside because then if it messes up, I'm gonna add my initials on the inside of this bag. Let's see if it works going straight through the foil. Let's see if that was the issue. Let me put some tape. This might not be super secure down. But let's put the tape down to hold it and see how that does. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go and add, go nice and slow and add my initials and see how that transfers. Now, I don't use fabric that often. I'm mostly a paper crafter, but I did have high hopes that this would work. And it might be that it just adds the hint of shimmer to something, which, is a technique in, a, in and of itself, of course, if you're not going all out because there's other ways to foil. See? Let me cover this one. R. It is nice and hot for sure. And I can see it kind of coming off, but I think we're going to run into the same kind of faintness. A 
much transfer as I can on there. All right, ERL, let's take off one side and see how we did. Yeah, it's super faint. All right, well, good to know. I thought it would totally work on fabric and I've seen it. Um, maybe it is a different type of fabric. That might be the deal, Carol. All right, sorry y'all, that was a little bit disappointing. Okay, let me just show you one Last little tip, I also picked up these ornaments because I think using this technique on ornaments is a fantastic idea for this time of year. And I just wanna show you, I just wanna use this ornament as kind of a guinea pig to show you some of the different lines that we can do. Hey, Lindsay. Lindsay, you've gotta tell us, does this work on fabric? Because I just tried it on fabric and Man, it was like a big fail. I'm super disappointed. So it might have just been, I think, Carol, maybe you're right that it's just the fabric or coating. You know what? Okay, for real. I can't give up because I really want it to work. Now, this is a darker fabric, but this is just, I mean, this is just a cotton blend that we have going on here. I'm going to add some gold to the tip of this one. All right, Lindsay. Well, that's another Tip Tuesday for you, friend, because you're going to need to teach us all how to do it on fabric if I can't get it figured out. Okay, this is kind of a fun, this is still autumn color, but let's see. I'm just going to try to add the foil to the edges of this one. And let's just do some simple lines and see. I am going over and over and like I said, this one's just a cotton blend. It's a basic. Now that bag might have had something. I know, right, Lindsay? Ooh, leather luck. I know, right? That was the other thing I was gonna try as my big finish, but now I'm a little nervous that it's not gonna work. And I'll show you it on, it's not, well, I'll show you it on some different leather in a second. So Lindsay, I'll try my leather for you live so you don't have to mess up your luggage tags. Okay. There, I went over this. See, so you do. See, you get you get it here. So maybe the deal with that bag is that it has the coating. And of course, I could have spent a little bit more time to make sure that it did. Okay, let me show you this. So I had this in my videos a couple weeks ago. It is a traveler's notebook that I made with leather from Italy. And so I wanted to try it on this side, this is a Mod Podge side, so I'm not totally sure how it's gonna take on top of that, so I thought we could try it. And then, of course, the inside is just plain leather. So let's try the inside first. We'll be guinea pigs right here and see what color. Purple on purple, maybe, anyone? I think purple on purple is what I'm gonna go with. Now, something with all of these foil sheets, I did, say that, you know, I've had it for a while. I do foil all the things now, I feel like, but I'm not really running low on the sheets. However, I do wanna make sure I use up as much as possible. So I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna add this, try to keep it in place. Now washi tape and leather, not necessarily the best combo. Let me wrap, wrap this side underneath here. Okay. So I am going to use the standard tip. Oh, Carol, don't be scared. It's okay. It's not going to ruin it. It'll be fine. I'm just going to write this uh, notebook is going to be kind of an encouragement book for me that I um, keep kind of, I'm planning actually truthfully to keep copies of the uplifting messages that people leave for me on YouTube because I think it's awesome and I was going to print some out and keep them in here for those times that I'm feeling a little bit discouraged. So in here I'm going to go again with the word believe and we'll see how it does. Carol, I promise I'll go slow so it doesn't mess up nice and slow because really the worst thing that'll happen is it doesn't take on the leather and then that won't be a big deal. If it takes a little bit, that's okay. If you watch the video for this particular project, this one, 
was a doozy anyway. It put me through my paces. I learned so much from making this little traveler's notebook. And then consequently, this one took me quite a while. And then I feel like it was just a few days later that I made one for one of my friend's daughters um, that's gonna be in her, in her um, Christmas present. And it was, it was so easy. It was hilarious because I had such an ordeal doing my own and then I'm working on hers and it came out super easy. So, you know, we learned that's how crafting works. So yeah, I'll just tell my husband if I mess it up, we have to go back to Italy. That sounds like a deal to me. So our wedding anniversary is actually tomorrow. Tomorrow is our 11th wedding anniversary and we went to Italy last spring to celebrate like a delayed trip to celebrate our 10th anniversary. So I'll just tell him if this doesn't work tomorrow that we just need to go ahead and schedule our trip back so I could get some more super authentic leather. All right, so I'm going with the word believe. Let's see how it took. Okay, y'all see it in there, right? I went over it, the impression's there. Let me, I'm just gonna lift up from here again, because if I start to lift it and I'm unhappy and I think I can fix it, I can put it down, let's see how it does. All right, it's coming a little bit. There it is. Yeah, that's pretty. So see, believe right in the middle. Okay, now here's the test. Everyone keep your fingers crossed as I kind of go over it. Yeah, it's in there. That is so cool, love that. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna go on the front right here. Let me find a little piece of purple that I can work with. Because again, I just kind of want to add my initials to it to see how it works over the Mod Podge. I'm a little nervous that the Mod Podge seals it up too much because of course we've seen it, we have seen it work on paper. Okay, so I'm gonna just add little initials down here. And I'm gonna go back to the bold tip because I like it a lot. Actually, I'm not gonna do my initials. I'm gonna just do a little heart. I think a little heart is a smarter test because if it doesn't work, I can cover that up more easily with something else, with like a fun embellishment or something. So here I'm tracing my heart and then I'm gonna kind of fill it in. And again, whatever pattern you do with your pens you're gonna kind of see on your project. So if that bothers you, that might be something to watch out for. Okay, I'm seeing that it didn't transfer perfectly. That's okay. This is kind of the imperfect project. Let's see how it goes. Eek. All right, oh, that's sweet. All right, not perfect. I can put it back down, cover up some of those spots. But that's sweet. And the cool thing is that it kind of makes an impression on the surface. So it's like embossed on top of that notebook. I love it. See, it's one of those sweet notebooks. And this is one of those crafts that means a lot to me. So I don't mind imperfections at all. All right. Let me double check my list to see if we went over everything. Oh, vellum. Vellum was the one thing that we haven't tried yet. And it's a little bit tricky as well because of course it is slick. But let's do some vellum testing. Really? Yes, the foil is permanent. The one thing that I have not checked, of course, I was a little bit wrong about the fabric. I'm not sure how well it's gonna adhere to your fabric t-shirt and then like washing that t-shirt. I'm guessing that that's not gonna end up well, but I know I love that too, Lindsay, how it makes that impression on it. I wouldn't jump in and put it on a fabric shirt that you're washing a lot, but I think some hints of it on fabric, like on the tabby right here, I think that's gonna hold up just fine. Okay, 
I'm trying to figure out what I want to put on this one. I'm thinking, let's try. I'm gonna just do for you some of the different lines so you can see the difference and we'll see how it does on the vellum. So this is the super thin one and I'm just gonna to try to draw some straight lines here. We can test it out. And again, I think the thin one, I know this might seem a little time consuming and ridiculous, but if you were to like add a little detail to your, um, oh, the snowflake, that's a good idea, Bobby. I'll put the snowflake right here. If you were to add a little bit of detail to your Christmas cards, to your tags, like look, I'm gonna just sign my name, my first name right here. Can you imagine signing your Christmas cards in gold foiling? Like, hello, fancy. That would be super fun. And plus, A, your cards end up fancy, and B, you get to play with fun craft supplies. So I think that is a win. Okay, so that's the thinner line. Let's do, this is the standard tip, so we have some comparison. I'll put it over here in the corner and we'll see how it takes. How would you do it? Oh, you know, Carol, that is tricky. Let me show you the one way I ended up doing it. First of all, if it's, um, you might want to embellish beforehand, like embellish a little embellishment before you stick it onto your project. She asked if you finished a card or a TN layout and then want to add some foil to the elements, how would you do that? I'm not sure how you could do like very specific things unless you have something adhered to the top. So for instance, I tried this on a project and let me show you, let me do this, okay. Hold up, let me show you. So first I'm gonna put down this foil on top of my vellum. Let me just show you guys right here. This is on top of the vellum. Look how pretty that turned out. Okay. No, the foil, it cools down really fast. It doesn't. Um, Bobby, I have my cords plugged in. Let me show you just a second. Let me just put this foil down. One is plugged into my laptop, which is right next to me so that I can see what you guys are saying. And the other is plugged into this USB. I think the cords are probably, I don't know, two feet, maybe a little bit longer than two feet. So I think getting one of those portable USB things is the way to go. Okay, so I have my snowflake right here. Let me show you what I plan to do. I'm gonna actually adhere this paper down. I probably should have cut the snowflake out better, but I'm gonna adhere this down so it's kind of a hinge on top of this vellum. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna trace this one in one color and then pick up the foil, pick up the paper, and then do the other one in another color and just show you how that's the only way so far that I've figured out how to change colors and kind of add detail over the top. If you have an image underneath, you're right, you cannot see through it. So the best you can do is place your foil really carefully, kind of use some you know, standard points. I also thought maybe if you've adhered your, you know, if you're working on a specific element and you've adhered it to, or are using magnets on your media mat or on your um, stamp platform, then you can know that it's in the same exact place and that might help you better put that down. I know I really like it on vellum. It works really well on vellum. Okay, let me finish this part of it right here. So I've got it, I've got this portion of the snowflake done. I think I missed a little section in here. Let me cover this really well. Okay, that might not be the greatest job. This is definitely one of those tools, the more you play with it. Yeah, see I missed some spots, but here's the cool thing. I put it back over the top. All I have to do is go over those again. And I think what's happening, I'm getting into like a color technique where I'm going back and forth and that is gonna 
make you miss things. Because if you have a wrinkle in the paper or anything like that, that's going to cause some of those to be missed a little bit more inconsistent. Okay, this won't be perfect, but let me just lift up the foil, show you. So that's part of my snowflake. I can move, ah, move that. And I'm going to add in a little green stem. So I'm going to put this right here. A green stem? Is that a stem on a snowflake? Hey, Nancy. I'm glad you were able to catch this, Nancy. Catch it live. That's awesome. All right, here we go. Put this down. And see, then all I have to do is trace the next one through the paper. You do have to be extra slow to make sure that he is transferring through. And if you are going to print out an image, I would just use like cheap copy paper. Don't use cardstock or anything like that. It's going to be, it's going to be too thick to use. To come through here. And I'm not going to do this whole thing because y'all have watched me color out. See, I, I'm getting into the habit of the back and forth, but I just want to make sure it's really covered with the heat. Nice and slow is the way to go. Patience, not my forte. So this is an awesome tool for me to use and work on that. So that's just part of that one. But you can see, actually, let me do this section right here. You can see it really will connect to the other part. So I could make a snowflake that is like all over the place. All right, you can make a snowflake that's like a rainbow. That would be gorgeous. Okay, ladies, let me double check my list again. Make sure we have everything covered. Okay, I think that was it. If you guys have any other questions, just leave them in the comments below and I will experiment and try out some different techniques for you if you needed me to check in on something or kind of research a little bit more. This was super fun. Thank you so much for joining. If you have any other ideas of things you want me to cover in my tools series, then also just drop me a message here or over on Instagram. Let me know and we will see you later. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and as always, keep it creative.